All right, everybody. Welcome to the first lesson in the Marvin Education Series, all about how to uh, stake your Marvin, make more money, and it's really a lot more than that. This is going to be an entire foundational framework so that you can create that long-term wealth in a safer, more predictable way instead of just hoping for moonshots all the time. And I want to start with a little quote and we'll come back to it a little later. I just want this to kind of percolate in the back of your mind as we go through this. It's protect me from what I want. And I forgot who said it. I believe she was a female author, but let that sink in. Let's get started here. All right. Now, more versus enough. Okay. Um, you'll hear Nick reference this often if you dive into any of his videos specifically. Uh, but more, more is unattainable. You know, it's volatile, emotional, it's gambling, it's FOMO, scarcity, quest for more, more, more. Like, how do you know when you've achieved more? You know, and you're just going to have to do bigger and bigger things and crazier and crazier things to try to get more, you know, gain a project to a thousand X and then flipping that into another project that you think is going to hundred X and then the next one, the next one, the next one. And sometimes it's all going to come crashing down. You know, it's those people that you see that blow up to overnight crypto millionaires and within a few months it's gone. You know, that's why you see so many lottery winners, like almost all lottery winners end up broke in a couple of years. You know, it's because all they want is more, more, more. All right. So what we want is enough. That's what we're going for. Because enough is achievable. You know, enough is, it's finite. You know, you know when you have it so you can achieve it. And that's predictable. If you know what you want to achieve, you can take steps to make it make it predictable, to know if you're on track or off track. And it's realistic then. You know, it's realistic. You can see it. You can see yourself working towards you. Like, yeah, I've got this number. I know I'm doing the right things to get to. I can see it growing. I can see it getting bigger over time. I can see myself getting closer to it. And that's satisfying, right? That's so much more satisfying than... Gaining everything, losing all, gain again, losing all, like, oh, that's an emotional roller coaster, all right? But how do we know when we have enough, all right? That's that's really important. That's the thing that most people don't spend enough time thinking about. And you really have to know what is enough. And here's some good questions to start guiding you. I really want you to take some time over this next week and Think about them, write some things down, work through it, all right? It's going to be so important for the rest of this series, so do not skip this. So the first thing, how do you want to spend your time? You know, once you've achieved all the money that you want to make, or, you know, pretend money is no object, you got everything paid for, how do you want to spend your time? You know, for me personally, like, I love photography, I love videography, and I would love to have more time to do that. So that's how I would spend my time. You know, I get up early, take pictures of sunrises, take pictures of sunsets. I got a new drone. I'd take that out and fly that in beautiful places. I love being out in nature, you know, so I'd find cool places in nature, you know, maybe travel to the mountains, things like that. You know, that's what I want to do with my time. I love spending time with friends, too. So you know, whether we go out to eat or have everybody over for a cookout, different things like that. I love to spend more time with friends. So I try to have, you know, dinner nights and things like that. And now what, you, you know, when you know what kind of how you want to spend your time, what you want to do with your time, then you have to look at what kind of life do you want to live? You know, that's kind of the level of affluence, you know, do you want million dollar homes? Do you want one of them? A lot of them? You know, do you want a garage full of sports cars and supercars, you know, or, you know, do you like something smaller? You know, would you rather uh, have a life out in nature and spend your time hiking through the woods and things like that? You know, do you want something that's comfortable around family? You know, like what kind of life do you want? And, you know, be realistic about it. You know, don't just pull out some crazy stuff and say that's what you want. Really spend some time thinking about the life that you want. All right. And then we kind of have to think of some of the negatives here because it's really important to look at the downsides too. If you ever look at the downsides, you're going to end up wrecked. So what do you want to avoid? You know, what do you want to avoid in your life? You know, do you want to avoid long commutes? Do you want to avoid working long hours? Uh, do you want to avoid the cold? Do you want to avoid cutting your lawn? You know, 
whatever it is, you know, do you want to avoid certain obligations? Do you want to avoid having to travel? Do you want to, you know, I don't know. What is it? You know, you got to spend some time thinking about these things. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. This is unique to you and your life. And this one's really important. This one is something that no one really thinks about. What are you willing to sacrifice? You know, it can sound really great to say, yeah, I want this affluent lifestyle. I want a bunch of houses around the country. I want all these sports cars. Yeah, I want that. It's so cool. But what are you willing to sacrifice for that? You know, are you willing to sacrifice five years and working 100 hours a week to get it? You know, are you willing to sacrifice time with your family, with your kids? Are you willing to sacrifice hobbies? You know, like, what are you willing to sacrifice? Or would you much rather sacrifice the fancy cars and the big houses to have something else? So think about that. Think of what you're willing to sacrifice, what you're willing to give up. To get the things that you want. All right. And the final one. What if you don't do this? You know, this is this helps really kind of connect everything emotionally here and gives you that uh that bad feeling if you start to do the wrong things, you know. So like what would happen if you don't do this? So imagine you're sitting on a rocking chair or anything out on a porch at 80 years old and you're thinking back about your life and Think about how you would feel if you never achieved this, you know, if you didn't live the life that you want, um, what would happen? What would that feel like? You know, think about that, write that down. It's really powerful to write that down and revisit that whenever you're, you're struggling, you know, remember why you're doing this. All right. Now standards. All right. It's good to have standards in your life. Standards. Standards give you direction on how to live your life. Standards show people how to treat you. Standards show you how to treat yourself, all right? And here are the standards that we're going to have throughout this series. Begin now. Nothing happens without action. You have to do something. You know, you have to get through this lesson. You have to spend time thinking about those questions. You have to write them down, you know? So begin now, because if you don't start never achieve anything. All right. And doing the work that's important. You know, this is going to require work This is going to require you to think about some things. You know, it's going to require you to spend time really thinking about your life. You know, that's work. It might not sound like it, but it's work and it's worthwhile work. This is good work. This is work that's going to give you the life that you want to live. All right. So do the work as we go throughout this. Do each step. Take the action. Do the things that I tell you to do. All right. And remember, slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. So slow is fast. Too many people want to rush in. They FOMO in. They feel all that sense of urgency. They got to jump in. No. That's how you make mistakes. If you try to go fast, you're actually going to go slow because you're going to be making mistakes. You're going to lose your money. And you're not going to know why. So you're going to keep repeating those same mistakes. But if you slow down, take time to think about what it is you're doing, what you're investing in, then you're going to move a lot faster because everything's going to keep pounding. All right. And you can go slow because you are so early still. Recording this in June of 2022. And A16Z just released a report relating the crypto industry to about 1995. Um in the year 1995, if we're talking about like the dot com boom, you know, dot com boom kind of went early 90s to, uh, you know, 2008 with the other market crash. So we've got a good amount of time yet. You have plenty of time. You are still so early. And the most important thing throughout all of this, because that's what all of this is for, so you can live your life, you know, live the life you want to live instead of spending your days checking prices, you know, looking at every coin in your wallet, see if it went up and went down, you know, being glued to that computer screen, waiting for the next thing to FOMO into, you know, we want you to live your life, you know, get out and do the other things you enjoy, spend time with friends and family, play video games, uh, play sports, watch sports, whatever it is you like to do, we want you to make sure you live your life. That's what this whole strategy is based around, all right? So let's start talking about the Marvin base case, all right? And call it the Marvin base case since it's for you guys, the Marvin community. And I'll be using examples for Marvin here because we are in a unique position 
with the Night Swap ecosystem to get started really quick if you're already a Marvin holder. And we'll get in more of that later, but the point of the Marvin base case is to build long-term wealth, all right? We want you to keep growing your money over time. Yes, Marvin will go up. Uh, we're going to do a lot of great things with Marvin. Um, how much it will go up, no one knows. No one can predict the future. And hoping and praying on one single thing, you know, that's not a winning strategy. You know, that's not how you build long-term wealth. So we're going to show you how you can start using your Marvin and how you can use using other strategies to keep growing that wealth and have everything compound, all right? And we can do this because it's purpose-driven, you know? Building that long-term wealth inherently has a purpose, you know, because what are you building towards? What is it the life you want? What things don't you want to do? You know, that all gives you purpose. You know, that sense of purpose helps drive the strategy, helps you keep doing the right things. And what's really cool with the base case and what Nick has built in Night Swap is it is very purpose-driven. And we'll get into a little bit of that in a second, but... These purposes are based on beliefs. Those beliefs turn into goals, goals and strategies, strategies and tactics that get you back to your belief. You know, so we'll be talking about macro beliefs shortly and what what that is and how to get your own macro belief. And from there, you can set out appropriate goals, you know, goals to help you achieve that macro belief and that F you money number. Then those goals inform your strategies, whether you use the Night Swap ecosystem or uh, different decks or anything else, you know, those strategies will be determined by the goals that you have. And everybody's goals are different, so everybody's strategy is going to be a little bit different. What this series is going to teach you is the framework for implementing the right strategy for you, all right? And those strategies will inform your tactics. Tactics are what change over time, you know, that might be different projects that you find that you want to invest in. You know, that might be moving your money different places as the market changes, and different things like that, okay? And when you have those tactics serving a greater macro belief, it becomes really simple to know what to do. And that's, that's a key here. We want simplicity. Complex things break. There's more margin for error. When they do break, we might not know what's wrong. They might break spectacularly. But when we keep things simple by using this base case strategy, you know, by investing in a macro belief and our goals, our strategy, and our tactics, all feeding into that, it makes life so simple. All right. And we love that simplicity. We want simplicity. That's mastery. You can make things simple. That's how you master it. All right. And that simplicity gives us security, you know. We can take that time to make sure the things that we're investing in are good projects, good assets. You know, we can have the security of seeing our base case growing and our wealth growing and know that we're on track. You know, we can have security that if we do get off track, we know that we have the strategies and the tactics to get ourselves back on track. All right. And if we have that security and that simplicity and we know what we're doing and that purpose that we're going for, it all becomes realistic, you know. Having $10 million in 10 years becomes real, realistic. Building that long-term wealth is now realistic, all right? So you see how we got all oh, this kind of feeds back into each other, all right? And then we got this guy right here. You know, he's kind of on his own and looks like he probably doesn't belong, but strategic degening. All right, this is fun. You know, this is where, you know, you've got your base case, making you money, doing the right things. Now you have a little bit extra. Now you can throw some money into that thing that you think might go 100x or 1,000x and, you know, pull your money out. You know, now you have an extra five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 that you can play with, whether you want to invest it back into long-term wealth, you know, whether you want to have a slush funds for strategic degen, you want to go on vacation, whatever it might be, you know. But we can do it safely and we can do it without worry and fear because we have this whole system that's generating assets and we can do this for free. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. So let's get into the outcome here. The outcome of this course, I'm gonna give you confidence. You know, we want you to be confident in thinking for yourself and being able to make the right decision, you know, and confidence in 
what your purpose is, what your goal is, what your FU number is. Once you have confidence in all those things, if you do the work, if you put the time in, you will have that, all right? The other outcome here is you're going to have a foundational framework. You know, if you follow along, take the actions I tell you to take, you're going to be able to start building the best base case for you right now. And you'll have that foundational framework that you can start growing your wealth. You know, even if all you have is $50 right now or $100 right now or $10,000, it doesn't matter. Um, this foundational framework you'll be able to set up as we go along and be able to start doing something with and start seeing those results. You know, that's that's how this whole series is going to be designed and outlined. So at the end, you have this. And what it looks like for you is going to be completely different than for me or anybody else, but you will have it. I'll make sure that you have it if you follow along, you do the work, okay? And clarity. Clarity is so important. We'll be talking more about clarity in a little bit, but this is going to give you clarity on the life you want to live, you know, the money that you need to live that life, how long it's going to take you there, the things that you need to do to get there. All right. And finally, I want to... Help you take tempered action, all right? I want to give you the tools and the knowledge that you can take tempered action because, again, nothing happens without action. You have to do something for something to happen. But if you do the wrong thing, it doesn't matter how well you do the wrong thing. It's still a wrong thing. You know, If you run really, really fast in the wrong direction, you're never going to get to your destination. You know, if you build a really, really great bridge, but it doesn't cross the gap, it's a useless bridge. All right, so we want to make sure that you're taking tempered action here, okay? And all of that is going to give you the life you want. So that's it. That's that's it. That's what we really want. You know, like, I've been very upfront about that uh, with Marvin. We're going to be transparent with you and educate you and help you live a better life and grow your wealth, you know, both within and out of Marvin, whether you are a long-term holder, whether you take profits to invest in other things. It doesn't matter. We want you to live the life you want all right so a little bit of housekeeping before we move on um mondays at 20 hundred utc or 8 p.m utc that's when we're going to be doing the live calls figured this one would be a little bit better to get out early because it's a little bit to chew on and i want to make sure we gave some extra time for q a on the first one just to make sure everybody's clear on this okay but here and out, Mondays at 2000 UTC, I might do a second Q&A call sometime later in the week if I feel like we need it. Um, but for now, Mondays at 2000 once a week. I want to give everybody a full week to digest this and do this and implement this because some of the stuff can take a little bit of time. All right. And I want to make sure everybody's doing it and getting it. It's going to go for about eight weeks. Um, might be a little bit more. Um, might be a little bit less if, we're, if we move through some of these things faster, but you know, plan to be eight weeks that we'll that we'll be meeting here. All right, for support, no DMs, please, please do not DM me. Um, I will not be able to get back to everybody if they just send me DMs. I do have the Telegram announcement channel. Um, if you came through there, you already know that. If you came through another means like YouTube or something, then. Please join this. Um, I'll have announcements, updates, things like that. There is a question form linked all over the place. Um, you'll you'll see it. I can't obviously link in this video, but um, you'll see a link for a question form. Please put all your questions in there. I will answer them. There will be a um, growing FAQ doc that I'll have um, that will be broken down by lesson. So we'll have that to get everybody's questions and answers in there. Like I said, we'll have the Monday calls and different things like that. But the Q&A form is the best way if you need to get, you know, something you want answered, clarified from one of these lessons here. Otherwise, you know, you guys are welcome to talk in the main group chat. Please help each other. Um, would love to see everybody supporting each other and, you know, getting some really good conversations going with this. The final thing here, not financial advice, of course, you know, we will be talking about different strategies for investing and things that you can do with your money. But I want to be clear, only you can decide and choose the right place to put your money. Do not invest in something simply because I talk about it, because anybody else in the core team talks about it, because you hear about it in the Wolf Den, Night Swap ecosystem, anything like that. Do your own research, of course. The goal of this 
course is to teach you how to think, what to think about, how to make those decisions better for yourself. Um, we will be using examples like Marvin, um, their guard token, their night swap token, bull piece token, things like that to help things be a little more tangible for you. Um, but again, if you don't like the projects, if you don't believe in the projects or don't know anything about the projects, please do not invest in them. You know, only invest in what you believe in. And that's the beautiful thing about what you're going to be learning here. This is applicable to so many different um, mediums, whether it's real estate, you know, traditional business, traditional finance, other ecosystems within crypto. All right. So plenty of different ways to use that. And we'll get more into that shortly. All right. So this is not what this course is not. It's not step by step. I'm teaching you um, strategies that you have to implement implement yourself. So there isn't going to be a lot of step by step here because you should be picking your own projects. Now, there will be some videos um, showing the night swap ecosystem and things like that, uh, simply because you do have Marvin that you can stake and pair with BNP and start earning a yield on that. Um, so we'll give you some things like that, but don't expect the step by step. All right. Um, I don't want you to expect any hand holding either. I cannot hold your hand through this. You do have to think for yourself. Um, we will all try to help uh, as much as we can, but please don't expect people to hold your hands through it. Think for yourself. Um, do this for yourself. Having that confidence in yourself is so incredibly important. All right, this course is also not about the details. You know, there are so many details and nuance that we could get into with all of this. Um, it's way beyond the scope of it. Again, we're making a foundational framework. There are plenty of different resources out there for you to dive further into the details. Um, depending on the questions you have, I might be able to point you in the right direction with different articles and things I've read. Um, but details will come later. We want you to get the foundational framework in first. And then you can focus on the details and optimize and things like that. I will also not be doing any research, all right? Um, not for other projects or things like that. You know, uh, you invest in the projects that you believe in. You do your own research. Um, I will simply be using tokens and coins in the Nightstop ecosystem for tangible purposes. Uh, again, so don't ask me about the projects. I will not tell you about them. I will tell you to do your own research. All right. And I also not be doing any fortune telling. You know, I will not speculate on where any of these projects will go or be in the future. I will not speculate on what kind of utilities might be coming out, things like that. You know, um, so please don't ask those questions. I will politely decline to answer them. Uh, no one can tell if anybody's trying to tell you they know the future. Please run away from them very, very fast. All right. So. Let's get into all right, the Wolf Den base case and Night Swap. So Wolf Den is kind of the overarching umbrella that houses all of this. Um, it is Nick's baby. He's been building a Wolf Den community of sorts for the last decade or so in traditional business and things like that. Incredibly intelligent people in there. Um, very cool. A lot of real world utility with that community and the education things that they're doing in there. You can go um, deeper and deeper into different tiers of the Wolf Den, and that will uh, give you greater and greater access to Nick and his team. And that access is something that's going to make the Wolf Den very valuable over the years. All right. So I think it's a really cool thing. And it's a big reason that we ended up partnering with the Wolf Den, you know, because Kyle knows knows them and knows how smart Nick is and stuff like that. And it just made sense for Marvin. All right. Now, you know, the base case, this is the foundational philosophy strategy that the Night Swap ecosystem is built on that Nick bases a lot of his thinking and the way he um, does business and things like that around this base case strategy. And the cool thing is this Night Swap ecosystem is built specifically for the base case. So, you know, it makes everything very easy to understand once you start seeing some of this stuff. But the base case is strategy agnostic. And you know, we're going to jump down to that section 
right real quick here. So strategy agnostic means you do not have to do this in crypto, okay? Um, you can apply this, like I said, with retail, uh, businesses, real estate investing, things like that, all right? I'll be what your golden goose is. And the golden goose is an asset that you believe will be going up and to the right over time, you know, whether that's um, real estate properties, that could be Bitcoin, that could be their guard token, that could be Ethereum, that could be um, the US dollar, you know, that's up to you. All right. But to determine that, to get clarity, certainty, and collapse time. All right. So clarity is knowing that FU number and the time frame that you want to hit it in. Once you have that clarity, then you devise a plan to get there. And that gives you certainty. You know, you can be certain that you're doing the right things. You can check to make sure that you're moving in the right direction, see when you're on track, when you're off track. All right. And once you have that certainty built in, when you have your base case, your foundational framework in, you can start collapsing time. You know, as you start building more money, then you can start looking at maybe, hey, I want to do this thing or that thing to be able to invest an extra $500 in, or maybe I can cut back a little bit here, invest uh, that extra few hundred dollars, or, oh, hey, I know this project is going to do really well. Put some, you know, a couple hundred dollars in there and reinvest that into my long-term strategy. So there are so many different things that you can do to collapse time. We'll get into more of those details as we go through, all right? And you know what? Let's jump right into clarity here. All right, so clarity it kind of goes back to those questions that I went over earlier. So revisit those. Um, but you know, things to think about: time. You know, where you want to spend your time? How do you want to spend your time? What don't you want to spend your time on? Your money. You know, look at how you spend your money now. How you would like to spend your money. Uh, do you like going out to really nice restaurants or would you rather eat at home? You know, do you want to have a great patio that everybody can come over and hang out at? Or, you know, would you rather get together at a restaurant? Different things like that. You know, how do you want to spend your money? You know, other things you consider family, love, home, you know, what, what, how important are those to you? What's important about those? Adventure, travel, cars, toys, play, you know, all these different things. Really get clear on what you value, all right? Because once you figure out what you value, you can come up with your fuck you number. And we'll go into more detail on that in the attached Google Doc with this. So kind of show you some steps for figuring out your fuck you number. But this is basically the number that you need, the amount of money that you need to be able to say fuck you to anything. You know, if you don't want to do a project, if you don't want to work anymore, you know, if you don't want to uh, stay with uh, a bad relationship, anything like this, it just gives you the ability to say no to whatever you want to say no to. All right. And I want to reiterate how important it is to understand and think about the cost and the sacrifice it's going to take to get to that fuck you number. The higher that number is. The more you're gonna have to cost, the more it's gonna cost, and the more that you're gonna have to sacrifice. You know, like, are you willing to sacrifice time with your family? You know, are you willing to give up eating out now? Are you willing to give up that vacation now? You know, and there's no right or wrong answer here. You know, it's all personal preference. You know, it's all a matter of what you are willing to sacrifice, the cost that you're willing to pay. But you have to know that there is a cost. You have to know that there is a sacrifice. You have to be clear on what you are and are not willing to do. You know, and once you get clear on that, you'll have even more clear and even more certainty that you can get to your fuck you number. So spend some time thinking about that as you go through the questions that we talked about earlier. All right. And that's going to get you from. All right. I love this. All right. So now enough. All right. Now is where we are at, whether that's fifty dollars, whether that's one hundred dollars, whether that's ten thousand dollars, you know, wherever you're at now. We have enough on the other side. That's your fuck you number. And this squiggly line is the path of least resistance, most economical path, the fastest way to get to enough. I know that sounds completely ridiculous, but the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, we don't know what's going to happen between now and enough. You know, things are going to go up, down, sideways, left, right, all around. You know, we saw terror collapse recently and, you know, that totally messed up the markets. You know, we had um, COVID happen a few years ago that totally messed everything up. So this 
journey is going to be squiggly and all over the place. That's okay. You know, if you feel like you're up and down and all around, like that's perfectly normal, you know, it's okay. You are fine. You know, just stick with your base case and keep going from there and just enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride. Because that's, that's the only option you got, all right? So let's dive into certainty here. All right, so you got to start or begin with the end in mind to stop getting wrecked, okay? You're getting wrecked because you don't have clarity on what you want. You don't know what enough is. You just want more. You know, that's an intractable problem. That's an unsolvable problem you cannot solve for more. You have to have something finite and measurable. $10 million in 10 years. That's a solvable problem, you know? FOMO and urgency. FOMO and urgency destroys so many people because it forces us to make emotional decisions. And we make emotional decisions, we usually make bad ones, all right? So if you're feeling FOMO, if you're seeing those green candlesticks and you want to jump in, feeling that sense of urgency because it's going to launch soon, you haven't done enough research, but you want to get in and stop, just stop, slow down. There will be another project. There will be another pump. You're still so early. Just stop. You know, fight that FOMO and urgency. Do not go. Um, well, that's good. You know, and that's what this base case strategy is all about, is to help you avoid that FOMO and urgency. The other thing that will wreck you over and over is when your micro strategies are not aligned with your macro beliefs. You know, so if you believe Bitcoin is going to keep going up and to the right, do not sell your Bitcoin. Don't day trade your Bitcoin, you know. You will almost always lose if you try to do that. You know, everybody who tries to time the markets and sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, it doesn't usually end up working out. So make sure that your micro strategies do not go against your macro beliefs. You know, your micro strategies should be all about acquiring more Bitcoin. You know, whether you do that by gain real estate and invest, reinvest in that real estate into Bitcoin or using the night swap ecosystem, this and that and it. Bitcoin, buying businesses, investing in Bitcoin, it doesn't matter how you get there. You know, it's just a matter about accumulating that macro belief. And we'll get into uh, macro beliefs here in a little bit. Frequency of exposure. You know, that's how often you're checking the data, checking the charts, trying to catch that next pump or, you know, figuring out if you can spot the next downturn in the market, things like that. That's all going to give you way too much information and you will make worse decisions. You know, the point of this base case strategy is to remove all those dopamine hits, remove that need for those dopamine hits. So you can let those things work. You know, you just come in and you compound your stuff once a day, once a week, once a month. Um, check everything once a month, once a quarter, things like that, and just lessen that exposure. You know, we don't want you looking at the charts all day long. It's not good for you. Asymmetrical risk to the wrong side. Um, this essentially means avoid things that have high risk potential because anything with high risk um, has a higher likelihood of not working out, right? That's why it's called high risk. And yes, it's high reward. If you put $10,000 in, it could turn into 10 million overnight. Absolutely. But what if it goes to zero? If you go down 90%, you know, can you stomach that? Can you hold it? You know, do you believe in the thing that much that you're willing to hold for that loss, right? Or instead, what if we take those high risk assets? Um, assets that we that we believe in that we think are going to do it. Put a hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. You know, sure, we only might make four thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand there, but much easier to lose a hundred dollars than ten thousand dollars, isn't it? And if we can keep doing that, if we make those small plays, it adds up over time. And the cool thing is, it's all house money. It's all extra because we have the base case. You know, we have that foundational framework that is going into all this, all right? So we don't need to take those big risks. We know when to take calculated risks. All right, collapse time. All right, so collapsing time is really just trying to get to your FU number faster and you know in a safe and strategic way. So of course, be responsible. Don't invest what you can't lose. You know, we don't want you investing the last of your savings you know, every bit of your check where if something goes wrong in your life, you have to pull all your money out. Like, that's not good. 
you know, that's how you will get wrecked because then you'll be worried about the charts going up and down and things like that. So be responsible. Invest what you can afford to lose because, again, you're still early and the power of compounding is incredible. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. I, I know a really good video or analogy that I'll have to find for you guys. So be responsible, all right? Uh, if you want to make more money, side hustles. Tons of very low skill side hustles that you can do that can get you a couple extra hundred dollars a month, thousand dollars a month, things like that. Um, if people want ideas, things like that, I can do a little extra bonus lesson for everybody on um, some really low skill side hustles that everybody can do and like legitimate ones. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I'm not talking about any MLMs or things like this, but real stuff that you could actually start doing right now. Okay. Um, so if people are interested in that, uh, let me know. I'll have to, I don't know, I'll, I'll make a poll or something like that. Um, strategic degenning, you know, I talked about that a little bit before. Once you have this base case strategy set up, you know, you start creating assets that produce assets and that's basically house money. That's free money. So you can take hundred bucks or 400 bucks and turn it into 5,000 or $10,000 with some of those really high risk plays. All right. And now you don't have to worry about if you lose them. All right. So that's a great way to start collapsing time later on. Um, plant trees. You know, this is more, more to have you think long term. You know, do things that you know are going to grow over time. You know, uh, starting a business, you know, can grow over time and will get bigger over time and, you know, be much more than what it is now. So, you know, again, investing in different assets that you know are going to accumulate or produce a yield, things like that. Plant trees, plant, you know, start doing things, start thinking about things long term. Think about how 20 years from now, 10 years from now, five years from now, this thing could be real big and give you shade and security. All right. Strategy agnostic. Like I said, you can apply anywhere. You diverse. Um, you know, like I said, real estate, you know, you can start using this to build real estate assets. You can build crypto assets. You can build businesses, all those different things. Anything that produces an asset you can use to produce more assets. All right. And diversify, you know, that's a great thing about this, you know, and you might want to do it later depending on what you're starting. Um, but you can diversify into different projects that will produce yield and feed those, Profits back into your base case. You can prof you can diversify into different businesses in traditional finance, uh, into real estate, into all sorts of different things. You can keep diversifying because all this stuff grows and builds upon itself and keeps feeding itself. So you have plenty of opportunities to increase that safety. All right. So keep that in mind. And again, I'm gonna say this over and over and over again. I want you guys thinking for yourself. You know, I want to give you the tools and the strategies and the frameworks that you can think for yourself and think about new things that I would never think of, that Kyle would never think of, that no one else might never think of. Because that's how we build better. You know, that's like how we make things even better is everybody is thinking for themselves and, you know, raising that human intelligence level, do a lot cooler things. So think for yourself, have conversations with yourself, have conversations with other people and, you know, come up with new ideas and things like that. And then finally, repeat this one over and over again. Enjoy the journey. You know, the best way to collapse time is enjoy the time you're spending now. You know, get super curious about this. There's so much more to go into with the base case, you know, so dive in deeper on something you find interesting. You know, find other things that you find interesting. If you love real estate, like go into that. Enjoy the journey as you go, go through all this, all right? All right, Golden Goose. I'm thinking we'll maybe probably do like a, a little bit more on this on the next lesson um, and really kind of dive into the Golden Goose. But essentially, the Golden Goose, if you ever heard the story, it's a goose that lays the golden egg. And you now every day the guy came back and laid a golden egg, but the guy was getting greedy. So he thought if he just killed the goose and cut the goose open, he'd get all the golden eggs all at once. But turns out there are no golden eggs in time inside and it's time that takes to produce those golden eggs so you can't kill your goose you have to keep fattening up that goose um so whatever that asset is you know like i said whether it's real estate bitcoin guard ethereum anything 
um, keep feeding that, you know, and keep doing things that will make sure that's producing more and more for you. All right. And we'll get into how all that works a little bit later on in this and more details later. All right. Probability over predictions. Like I said, we cannot never predict the future. You know, we have no idea what's going to happen. And, you know, that's why, like, the further out in time you go, um, you know, we just don't know. We just don't know. Um, you know, look at the Jetsons, if you guys know that it's a futuristic cartoon show from, you know, years and years ago. Their future looked nothing like what our future is, you know? We have no hover cars. It's something completely different, so we can't know, all right? Um, all we can do is increase the probability for success, and that's what we're trying to do here, is we're trying to give you tools, techniques, strategies, things to do that will increase the probability of you being successful. I'm gonna show you how to remove you know, bad decision-making, how to slow down and make better choices and things like that to improve the probability for success. You know, just kind of zoom in here. Um, nothing is guaranteed. Like I said, you know, Marmon's going to go up, Marmon's going to go down, so is Guard, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and any one of these could blow up at any point for any reason completely outside of anybody's control. So nothing is guaranteed, all right? So we have to prepare for an uncertain future. You know, that's why it's important to, as you grow, diversify into different projects that you believe in, you know, to have a golden goose that you know is safe and secure, all right? Um, we want to prepare for those that uncertain future, all right? Because humans are predictably irrational. You know, the quicker you make decisions, you know, the more emotionally charged you are when you're making decisions, the more irrational you become, you know, when you then that FOMO, the urgency, having to do things now, not having enough money, things like that. All of these things um, can make us irrational. And by internalizing this base case philosophy and strategy, it's going to help you be a little less irrational. You know, check yourself and know when you are being irrational and be able to stop yourself. All right. Because what we want to do is we want to separate emotions and logic as much as possible. All right. We want to increase the amount of time between emotions and logic and we don't want to make decisions or highly emotional because that logic won't be there okay so we want we want to take that time to understand our emotions and make that logical choice and if we keep all of these things in mind this is how we become anti-fragile you know an anti-fragile system is something that actually gets better and improves in diversity you know an unbreakable system you know it just Weather's all storms, it's fine, it can get through it, but an anti-fragile system actually gets better. You know, we want you getting better during the hard times. We want to teach you the things and give you the tools so that when everybody else's world is burning down, you're sitting there enjoying the enjoying the sun, sunshine and nice weather, all right? So we're gonna get into assets that create assets, all right. So an asset's something that produce you know that makes money over time, you know, stocks, cryptocurrency, real estate, things like that. And what we want to do is we want to use these assets to create new assets. So rather than spending our money, we're going to reinvest it into a new asset. All right. So night swap, um, their ecosystem is set up exactly for the base space and this whole asset create assets. You know, once you stake your Marvin BNB, it produces night. Night is their DEX token, you know? So you can start accruing night and then you put that night into different pools. You know, whether you want to do a guard BUSD pool and start earning night through that. You know, if you want to do a single side and start earning Marvin with your night, you can start doing that. Um, they have so many different things that you can do where you can use these assets to create new assets, you know, and it just keeps feeding into each other. Or you can take it out, you know, you can have your Marvin BNB producing night, you can sell your night, buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum, you know, whatever it might be. If there's projects on different networks, you can do that. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're reinvesting into another asset that creates an asset, you know, and the more, ch you know, the longer the chain you want to build, you know, the more that you want to diversify you can, um, the less you want to have, that's probably better in the beginning if you don't have a lot of money. 
and we'll kind of get into that in the next section here. Um, but the importance is here is the reinvesting. You know, if you keep reinvesting, everything compounds. So let's go back here. Reinvest and compound. You know, yeah, take a night swap again. You pair your Marvin BNB, starts producing night swap. You know, for the first little while, you can drop that night swap into a single side stake and pool and get more night swap. You know, that night swap just feed it back into itself, feed it back into itself, feed it back into itself. That grows and grows. Now you can buy, take half of that night swap by BUSD and guard. You know, and now that starts producing more night, and that starts producing more night. You can throw that back into that single side night pool, and now you're even making more night, more night, more nights coming out. And you take half of that again. And you can throw that into your BUSD and Guard, or you can do Marvin, or you can do any number of other projects. You know, just reinvest, compound, reinvest, compound. You know, that keeps helping you collapse time, okay? Now, let's go over to Night Swap. All right, bringing in the project. So, Night Swap is a DEX. Um, kind of based on that base case and the Wolf Den philosophy. We've got a lot of different projects in there. You know, some are, um, you know, more closely tied to the Wolf Den, some are more loosely tied, but they're all partnerships of some sort. They have something um, to do with the Wolf Den in some way. So you do your research on them, of course, see what projects you like and what makes sense for you. Um, but there's a ton of different projects and um, some pretty cool ones on there. You know, Nick's a smart guy. He's not going to be bringing in um, really awful projects into the system. So you know that uh, they got a little leg up there, but there's tons of them. So again, I'm not going to do the research for you. Do it. Utility, always a big one. You know, really make sure you're taking a hard look on utilities of a project and how feasible um, it's going to be for those utilities to come out, you know, look at all the things. What's the team? What's their background? Um, what kind of funds do they have? What their tokenomics are? All that stuff. Um, so make sure you're checking the utilities as you're going through the different projects. Of course, it's your choice. Your choice. Only you can choose. I won't tell you. Nick won't tell you. No one in the community will tell you. No one in the core team will tell you. It's your choice. Invest in the projects that you believe in. And do your research. You know, like we can help you do, you know, with the right questions to ask, you know, if you're not sure on a project, you know, we can kind of push along and say, hey, make sure you check this out, make sure you check this out, or hey, here'd be a good article to read, but at the end of the day, it's your choice, you know, so do the research, really do the research, and slow down, right, slow down, there's plenty of time, you know, if you miss this project, that's fine, you know, there'll be another one, there'll be a similar one, you know, again, the more you read, the more you learn, the more you look at this stuff, the more you're going to know, and the faster you'll be able to make those decisions, all right? So slow down for now. All right, Night Swap tokenomics. Again, they were designed for the base case. Um, I'm not gonna get into the details of all of that here. If people are interested enough, they have plain mediums art articles on that. I can put uh, links to those for anybody who's interested. But their three main tokens are Guard, Knight, and Wolfies. All right, so Guard is their long-term asset. This is the one that um, Nick is putting a lot of focus in, making sure that keeps going up and to the right over time. This is his macro belief. You know, again, it's his based on everything he knows and what he's done. It does not have to be your macro belief. It does not have to be my macro belief. Um, but that's what Guard is. That's their store of value asset. That's kind of their... Bitcoin, so to speak. All right. Knight is their DEX token. Um, all of their farming and staking gets paid out in Knight. So you start accruing that as you put Marvin BNB pair in there, as you do Knight BSD pair, things like that. You're going to get paid out in Knight, and that Knight has a ton of buying power. You can reinvest that into different parts of the Night swap ecosystem, you can pull it out, put it into different assets, uh, hold it for now, different things like that. Um, but that's Knight, and you'll be working with Knight a lot if you choose to use the Night Swap ecosystem. And the final thing is Wolfies. Wolfies is kind of like their cash. 
you know, you buy the NFTs with them or NFWs, as they call them. If you want to get more access to the Wolf Den, you pay that. And um, Wolfies, you know, they have different conferences, games. You know, they do a Saturday game that uses Wolfies, things like that. So that's uh, that's one that you might want to accrue if you do the Night Swap ecosystem as kind of a secondary asset just to have some of that around. Um, again, if you want to go deeper in any of those, feel free, um, but you can do that research on your own. And the ecosystem. All right, this is going to be the what you all have been waiting for in here. And you can see it start there, and we'll get to it in just a second. But don't chase APYs. All right. Um, and it goes into a lot of detail on this. Um, really interesting stuff. But basically, the higher the APY is, you know, when you get that 300, 500, 10,000 percent, whatever it might be, um, that usually means that the token is very unstable. You know, the price could go way up, could go way down. You never know. You know, so if you bought in at a dollar and it drops to two cents, well, you know, it doesn't really matter what that APY is. You're probably still going to be losing money. All right. So lower APYs usually means a more stable price. You know, it's not going to see as much volatility here. And um, the thing that a lot of people don't consider, again, is that token price. You know, the APY might be lower, but if it doubles or triples or quadruples over the next five years, now your APY is going a lot higher. And again, um, we can get we're gonna get a little bit more of those numbers in a future lesson, um, but just keep that in mind for us. Don't chase APYs. All right. Next thing is compounding your compounding. A lot of this base case um, can be made way more effective, and it's kind of built into strategies that you keep compounding um, what you're compounding, and you'll see how that all works in just a second. But that's where this uh, night token really comes into play here for the night swap ecosystem and again other dexes have their own dex token that if you believe in those you can um, invest in there and start using their pools and things like that um, but you want to make sure that you're compounding your compound i'll show you how that happens in just a second and then one more reminder before you get into it using your assets to create assets all right and that's what this is all about here so let's dive in so like I said, pick your own projects. This is not financial advice. Since this is for our Marvinots, we will start with the Marvin BMB pair. You know, if you're a Marvin holder, um, you know, you already have something to start out with, whether that's $50, $500, $5,000, whatever it is, um, you got some of that. And you're just gonna do a one-to-one -one pair with BNB. And again, um, I'm not gonna get into the how-to of that. That's all laid out in the night swap ecosystem the medium article for the marvin stuff like that um, so you do the pair one-to-one -one ratio you add to the liquidity and that's paying out somewhere around i think 199 percent when i checked it this morning june what day is it june 5th sunday june 5th 2022 something like that early june all right so it's 199 percent um, that's going to change of course over time all right, so that produces night. Marvin accrues night, you know, throw some money in there. I think, you know, at the 199%, it's like for every $1,000, you get 16 night. Call it 16 for now, whatever. Um, details don't matter right now. So you're going to produce night, and there's a lot of things that you can do with night. They have plenty of single-studded staking pools where you can throw your night into guard, throw it into wolfies, throw it into BNB, drop it back into night, put it into Marvin, BOSD. So any of these, you know, and that's what it's actually going to produce. So you'd stake night, and it's going to give you wolfies. You're going to stake night, it's going to give you guard, BNB, more night, more Marvin, more BOSD. All right, so you can do that. Um... Or, you know, if you've got some extra funds, you can take your night and you pair with BNB. All right, and you got another two side pool here. So take night, equal amount of BNB, and you can start earning a yield there. All right, I don't remember what this was at right now, like 
eighty percent, one hundred and fifty percent, two hundred percent. So it doesn't matter. Details don't matter right now. It will change over time, but it will always produce night. Okay, so you're starting to make more nights. So you can see how we have one asset here produce nights. Create another asset. You know, you can just let your night build up for a while, sell half your night to buy BNB, pair it, make more night. All right, so now you have one, two, three, three assets producing assets. All right, and this is where you start to see that compounding coming in. All right, so you know that feeds into itself. You know, so you have the night coming into here, making more night into there. It keeps going around, so you know this just grows and grows. Let's see how ridiculous we can make it. You know, so it's bigger. All right, it just keeps growing over time. Yeah, you know, it gives you more options for all this stuff you can do, and you know, <clears throat> you can get enough night, and now you can throw one of the auto compounders. All right, so that's another cool thing about night swap that we'll get into. They have auto compounders. So what you do, you know, there's one where you take night drop in there and just keep compound your night just grows and grows and compounds and compounds and compounds you put a b uh busc bnb pair you know a lot less apy but very very safe you know so if you have um a little extra money you know you're on track for your base case you want to start moving things to safer assets you know you can start doing that um and you can do night bnb you know, I think they have a pretty good night BNB pair right now that's producing a good APY. Again, that's going to change. Guard BSD, you know, if your macro belief, macro strategy is guard, they've got this auto compounder. And what happens is periodically, it's either daily or at an um, interval that makes sense for your investment. Um, I forgot which it is. It will sell off half the night that's being produced automatically so it still is producing you know so this pair is still producing night and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger right um but what it does is it automatically magic all that kind of stuff um sells off night into bmb bsd and then drops it back in the out um, liquidity pool and then pairs again all right so that's essentially what an auto compounder does and really cool because you don't have to look at it you don't have to touch it it just keeps growing it keeps growing and maybe once a month you take out your night here or somewhere else and you drop a little bit more into there you know however you want to we'll get more into that part of the strategy later again this is just showing you kind of what's possible in the ecosystem and the other thing you can do is take it out completely you know, if you just want to crew night for a while and sell it off, take it out, put into something else. You can do whoosh, get there. Phantom or Wizard. Um, you probably won't touch on these in this series, um, but these are some other other areas that the Night Swap Wolf Den ecosystem has. Um, you know, Nick himself is bullish on Phantom. Again, if that's not part of your macro belief don't invest in it, but they do have pretty much the same Night Swap ecosystem on the Phantom Change. Um, if you're an NFT person, they have Wizard. Wizard's kind of their NFT playground. Um, I am not big on NFTs myself, so I have not looked into that yet, um, but there's plenty of things that you can do there, or, you know, we'll keep it big. You, know, you can do real estate, like I said. to Bitcoin, ETH, all sorts of things, buy businesses, whatever you want to do, all right? But it all starts with having an asset that produces another asset and produce an asset. And you can see how this just keeps building. And as you go and as time goes on, you know, like all of these different asset pools are getting bigger. You know, it's going to get bigger. This is going to get bigger. This is going to get bigger. 
Um, so now they're going to compound more on each other, and you can do whatever you want with it. But the key is you can't kill your golden goose. You know, whatever that... There. Golden. Oh, jeez. Golden goose. Don't kill it. Yeah, you know, whatever that is. You know, if that's guard BOC, if that's over here, you know, whatever it is, you know, like you want to keep feeding it. You know, you want to keep feeding it because it's going to grow. You know, this is going to grow. This is going to grow. Um, you know, you keep feeding your Marvin if you believe in Marvin. You can feed BNB if you believe in BNB. Whatever it is, you know, it's completely up to you. Um, but don't kill these things. You know, you can pull this out. You know, like if you don't, don't really need to do the night BNB anymore and you want to pull that out and put it into guard, you can do that. You know, if you want to pull out for a new business adventure over here, you can do that because you have the Marvin BNB here that's making money. You have this that's going into these other ones. You know, you have it going into the auto compounders. You know, so you have all these different kind of checks and balances in here that keep producing money over time as you diversify so that if you need to, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, maybe, so maybe not this one, but maybe you pull in and go to like, there's another project on there, like bananas one, you know, maybe you're in banana for a while and all of a sudden something happens. You don't like banana anymore. You can pull your money out of that and throw it back into guard. You know, so many different options to do. And we're going to get more into that strategy, um, next week and the following weeks for now, what I really want is just to make sure that, we, oh, here we go, let's take a look at those, figure out what you want, and then in the Google Doc that is attached to this, you're going to um, go through that exercise, kind of walks you through with getting getting that number and kind of how to figure out how much money you need um, and that time frame to get it. So this week, focus on these things, write them out, talk about them with the people that you care about, that you trust, and then figure out your book, you number. And of course, ask questions. Um, anything you don't understand, um, there will be a link to the Q&A in the Google Doc and eventually a Medium article and all over the place. So please ask questions in there. And I hope Hope this all made sense. If it doesn't, please let me know. Like I said, this is living, breathing. I will um, update, add to, take out, things like that. But I hope you all enjoyed day one. Um, go ahead, feel free to rewatch again if you need to. Um, otherwise, get to work. <laughs>